Hello, welcome to the HVMFC YouTube channel. What I would like for you to do is like and subscribe. Have a blessed day. Coming up on The Inspired Word. I was the one that needed to make the change, not necessarily them. And when I made that change, it's something because they changed concerning me. I tell men even now through counseling a lot of times, when you change, everything will change around you. Why is that? Because you're different. family, Pastor Charles here, with a quick reminder of our mission, which is to seek the lost, teach the found, and send the disciples. To continue to reach our community and people all around the world, I invite you to join us by financially partnering with us on our mission. To do so, go to www.harvestvillage.org slash give. Thank you. Hello, family, and welcome to Harvest Village Online. I'm Pastor Charles Miles, and I have an awesome message prepared for you today. So go to your Bibles, your pencil, papers, your notepads, as we get ready to get started. Today the topic is, be careful of who you connect it to. Some time ago, matter of fact, years and years ago, I was getting ready to go into business with a certain person. Everything looked good, you know, all the paperwork was good, the money that he was talking to me about was, was great, as a matter of fact. It, it was so good, I mean, I, it would have literally set me and my family up for years. I'm giving you this thought process because at that time in my life, we needed this money. As a matter of fact, this money could have helped us a lot, especially in our younger lives. But it's something. Because I had committed to, to this relationship, I had committed to prayer though. I want to make sure I say that. Committed to prayer in God concerning this relationship. And as I was praying over this relationship, I knew something was not quite right. And, and it's something because God made it so plain before me that this is not a relationship that you can enter into. This, you know, this business relationship is not for you. You know, and I had understood from early on, all money ain't good money, but something is something rather when you, you're you looking at a, a good amount of money and you see for yourself how this can set you and your family up. But through prayer, I was to understand that, you know, Charles, don't get in this relationship because it's not going to be for you. And, and it's something because it came to the moment we were getting ready to sign the contracts with this person. And I decided not to do it because I decided to do what God told me to do. As soon as I had told this person that I'm not getting ready to sign this contract, oh my goodness, he he went all in. I mean, when I say he went all in, calling me all kind of names, bad names, I mean, things you shouldn't talk to any man about. And it was something. You would think I would be mad at what he said. I was more astonished because I realized God had gave me his understanding regarding this person, but I just couldn't see it yet. And so when it came out, I was in such, such like shock and awe. I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. Thank you for opening this up and allowing me to see the true person here because it was all smoke and mirrors, but I couldn't recognize it. I realized then how you have to be so careful of connecting yourself to the wrong person or the wrong thing, you know, simply because they'll go in and tear so many things, you know, up in your life. You know, if I were connected to myself to this guy right here in that business deal, I would have been in that business deal at minimum 10 years. Man, this guy would, would probably try to destroy me. Literally, but I could not see it because he came in under that falsehood, you know, all love, so to speak, all, you know, talking about the family, talking about the kids. I mean, everything was wonderful, but I could not see it on my own. We have to, once again, be so careful of what we connect ourselves to. Have you ever noticed, or this may have been you, and I hate to say that, but I know it's been me, and we distribute certain behaviors, behaviors such as, you know, I'm going to say something that sounds odd, like hate, despair, fear. Impatience, cruelty, wickedness, unfaithfulness, harshness, and undiscipline. Do you re recognize these type of things here? These things that we, if we produce them, these things are actually have, have nothing to do with God. And I'm bringing this up because sometimes we get connected to people. Okay, and, and once we're connected to them, we start to, our character rather starts to change. You know, who we are starts to change. And it's for the worse. 
And I'm talking about it for the worst for a moment because I want you us to realize, all of us to realize, we may come into a place, we may come into a predicament when we get next to somebody, all of a sudden we're no longer who we're supposed to be. We find ourselves different than we've ever been. And, and it's in a bad way. I'm bringing this up because I want us also to understand here we are, we may be in a relationship, we may be in a business deal, and it's not truly for us. But unfortunately, we didn't see it beforehand. And because we didn't see it beforehand, what tends to happen is now we're here and we don't understand what to do because we've gone so far down the road. And I have realized that we're connected to the wrong source. And I'm saying the wrong source right here because the things I just read out to you, this is actually the opposite, okay, of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is some of the fruit that Satan puts through people or, you know, can come up on the inside of us and before we know it, we'll be holding on to it. I'm just, let's take fear, for instance, as an example. We know fear does not come from God because God does not have the ability to give us fear. I'm, I'm bringing that up because if we are in a, in a place of fear, a state of fear, and we constantly stay there, I'm not saying we won't have fear for moments. I'm not saying that we won't come into something that, that gives us a little bit of fear, but we know if we're staying there, okay, that's actually a fruit of Satan himself. Okay, Satan is an adversary. That's what the devil means. He's an adversary. He is against us. And I want us to understand if we got people that we're connected to and all they bring out is those things I just talked to you about with the hate, despair, fear, uh, impatience, cruelty, wickedness, unfaithfulness, harshness, or, and they're undisciplined. These are people that we should not be connected to because they'll start to bring up the worst in us. As a matter of fact, they'll start to give us things that we never, sometimes we never even had. Now, if we find in ourselves that we're producing these things, you know, from within us, hey, we got to get this on the outside of us. So real quick, if you have your Bibles, go and turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23. Because it says right there in Galatians chapter five, verse 22, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I give you those nine fruits because I want you to understand these are the fruit that God would have us produce on the inside of us because these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we understand that we operate. When we're truly operating the right way, we're operating producing these fruits. These are the things that can grow up on the inside of us and then we produce them. We give out to others. We give to, to ourselves first and then to others. So if we have certain things being produced on the inside of us and it's not good, okay, we must understand okay, that we need to get these things on the outside of us. Okay, we cannot sit here and be connected or producing these things, connected to the wrong person and produce these things because these are the things that tear us down. These are the things that hurt our relationship. They harm us. Now, let me step back just for a moment because we have to look at the heart because the heart is actually can be for us or the heart can be an issue for us. The heart can be against us. And what I simply mean by that, we must understand our heart is fertile ground, good, bad, or indifferent. Okay, and what I mean by fertile ground is our heart has the ability to grow all seed. Sometimes we miss that. And it's so important that we gather that because see, whether the seed is good or bad, our heart has the ability to grow it on the inside of us. Now, when something becomes full grown, we then see the actions from it. So I give you this thought process right now. See, we may think of just something terrible. Like think of a killer. Somebody that constantly kills people, kills people. That, that's, that's, a, that's a fruit that he's producing from the inside of him. But he didn't start off that way. When I said, or I should say she too, I want equality, right? He or she didn't start off that way. I want to give you this thought process because see, that right there has grown up on the inside of that person. Okay, that, that evil, you know, that, that thought process, it, it started somewhere, but it started as a seed. Then once that seed became full grown on the inside of them, then the action started to show. And the actions is what that person is producing. I want to give you that thought process because see, if the heart has the ability to grow anything, we got to be so careful what we allow to grow up in our heart. That's why scripture tells us, I believe it's in the book of Proverbs, you know, guard your heart above all things. Because the reason it tells us to guard our heart simply says, because from the heart produces our actions. Now, this is so important that we get it because it's from the heart that we produce our actions. we got to be careful what we allow to grow up on the inside of our hearts. So if we allow good things to grow on the inside of our heart, we allow the fruit of the Holy Spirit to be produced on the inside of our hearts, then we have a great thing that we're going to be doing. Why? Because we will eventually see the actions okay, of, that, of that seed okay, become fruit, and then we'll see the fullness of it. The opposite takes place also with the bad seed. If we allow the bad seed to grow up on the inside of us, we're going to be producing those actions, and sometimes we may not even be aware of it. I have changed in so many areas of my life, some good, some bad. Some things that I have allowed to grow up on the inside of me have changed me for the better. 
Okay, when I became Christian, you know, I started to learn differently. I put some things on the inside of me that have absolutely made me a better man. But I've also, even though I was Christian, I've allowed some of the wrong things to grow up on the inside of me. That has taken away from me. That it has burdened me, burdened my family, right? Because they have produced bad actions within me. I give you this thought process because if we have the ability to produce both things, how important it is for us to make sure Okay, that we are producing the right things. And this is really where I want to go today, and this is the book of John, John 15. Because the Lord is trying to help us to stay connected to Him. Because when we're connected to Him, then we can produce the correct things. Amen? Amen, amen. So John, John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father's divine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes, that it may bear more fruit. I love this verse. I think this is one of the best verses in the Bible to give us understanding. Because Jesus is saying, okay, I am the true vine in my Father's divine dresser. Now, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he's saying, so if you're not connected to me, okay, there's no way for you to bear the fruit that I'm asking you to bear. Okay, I want to make this plain. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the fruit that he wants you to bear. Now, I give this to you right here because he's saying, if you're not producing this fruit, he says, my Father is the divine dresser. My Father is the one who comes and takes things away from me. Okay, and that branch okay, will be thrown into the fire, basically, because he's going to be ready to take it away. But he says, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. I believe when this is so important, so important that we get it to a standpoint that in some areas of our lives, okay, yes, we're connected to God, but in some areas of our lives, they're not producing the right way. As a matter of fact, you know, because the Lord is who he is and he loves us, he's going to take certain things away from us because he doesn't want us to produce these things. Yes, we are connected to him, but he wants us to be better. He wants us to produce the fruit that he would have us to produce. I give you this thought process because in my life, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I was working on making my relationships better. I was with my spouses, with my kids, working on making my home better because I want to be, I want to feel, I, I didn't have that joy where the guys on the inside of me. I didn't have that peace. And I didn't understand why. I had a lot of external things. Financially, I was externally good at this point, but I didn't have any peace on the inside of me. What escapes a lot of people is they do not have peace, and they don't know what to do about it. They think they can solve with all the external things they can, they can put their hands on, on the things they can buy, the things that they're able to do. But I want us to understand, guys, if you don't have joy on the inside of you, you don't have peace on the inside of you, you are missing so many things. You're missing so much, so much so that people even take their lives because of this issue. But they're looking to the wrong source to get it. Because they can't look to worldly things because the world doesn't have these things to offer. This is so important that we understand that because when we look to the world to give us things that it don't have to offer, what can we do with it? It's no good for us. It's like, you know, going, going to the gas station and, and looking for health food. Why are you going to the gas station, okay, and looking in the mini mart and looking for health food? It does not have that to offer. Okay, and then we sit there and we'll put all that junk into our body and we think, well, we're going to get a good production from it. We're going to be able to produce good things from it. No, you're not. You're going to be sluggish. You, you're going to be coming to a place if you stay there long enough, you're going to be sick. But why? Because it doesn't have good things to offer. These are things that we fight to get out of us. Why? Because we all have moments in our lives. Each and every one of us, I don't care who you are, Christian or not, we all have moments in our lives where we're going to have to deal with, with you know, certain evil things in our lives, certain things that, that, that push us or take us to a place in which we should not go. You know, take us to a place where we, we say things that we should not be saying. We may have issues like this in our lives, but the goal is to get this out of us, right? And so we can move forward, guys, in life. I have seen so many people, good, bad, and different, you know, unfortunately, because what they allow to grow up on the inside of them changed them. Changed them in a way where, where they are not the person they're supposed to be or they never become the person they should be simply because they allow something to grow up on the inside of them that should not be there. It is so important that we catch these things growing, growing up on the inside of us. Why? Because we need to get rid of it. You know, like I say, some of the, the evil things that grow up on the inside of us, guys, if we don't catch them, unfortunately, it will destroy who we are. It will destroy our peace. It will destroy our joy. You know, it will destroy our relationship. It will destroy our homes. And we're not recognizing sometime until it's too late. And, and it's something, because I, I was uh, in one of the meetings that I do, one of the groups that I'm in, some years ago, I'll never forget, as we were sitting there going through uh, one of these series that we were going through, and it was helping us men it was helping us as men to see ourselves, 
you know, the, see the fullness of who we are at this moment in our lives and why certain things have taken place in our lives. And it was a beautiful workshop that we had went through. And I love this workshop because as we start to recognize the things that we've allowed to happen in our lives, the things that we were still allowing to happen in the present, I, one of the men was sitting there and, and he went real silent just for a moment, real silent. And he, he was, you know, very talkative guy. So when he went real silent for a moment, he had one of those reflective moments and he just, out of his mouth, he says, I realize now why my wife divorced me. And it was the most surreal moment. Everybody just kind of, you know, closed their mouths. Nobody said a thing. And, you know, he just, it was, it was, it was tough because you could see the look on his face. You could see the hurt on his face. But I, I realized in that moment is something because if we all can reflect and look back, you know, what got us to where we're at, especially if we're in that bad moment, that bad place in life, if we can realize what got us there, you know, there's something that could take us out of that place. There's something that can get us to another place, a better place. And, you know, in that moment, it is something because I realized with him, it couldn't have been a couple years later that he ended up getting remarried. He's doing wonderful in life, you know, and every time I see my brother, man, he's smiling and he's, and he's happy, but he had to realize what was tearing him down from within because what he did not understand at first was he thought it was all the external things that were happening around him that was causing him frustration. Really, it was coming from within him. He was the problem. And until he recognized it, okay, he was going to be upset with everybody else. It's something, too. This is another way that you may realize what's going on inside of you, especially when it's bad, is that when you seem to be the very thing, the bad thing happens to from everybody, I mean, so everybody else is the problem, but you're the only thing consistent, you may need to look at yourself. You know, what am I doing wrong? Why do I keep having this reaction? Why are people keep treating me this way? You know, have you looked at self? I ask you to have an internal reflection because if you really think about it, when you change, people will change around you. Sometimes our actions do, uh, require a certain response because our actions require a certain response. We may find people keep doing a certain thing to us, but why? Why is it happening from multiple people to just me? You know, what am I giving off that's causing these things? Sometimes the very thing that we're giving off is causing a, a reaction that we do not like and we're not recognizing that we are the ones that's causing it ourselves. What are you producing? What are you giving off to give that? You know, what are you doing to bring that response towards you? I remember this even in my life, especially when I became a, a young manager. I realized a lot of the, the guys and stuff I was working with, you know, they, at first I thought there was kind of a, a, a jealousy because I was young and, and, I, and I got this position. But what I realized is I got to go in here and talk and, and treat these men a certain way. You know, they deserve a certain level of respect. Now, I didn't in any way think I was being disrespectful, but the way in which I went about it, it needed to change. I needed to grow up, so to speak. And once I changed the way I was interacting with it, once I changed the way my thought process was concerning them, what I realized, I was getting a different response from them. These guys turned out to be my good friends and they're friends for life. You know, and I give you this thought process because I was the one that needed to make the change, not necessarily them. And when I made that change, it's something because they changed concerning me. I tell men even now through counseling a lot of times, when you change, everything will change around you. Why is that? Because you're different. When you're different, people will change around you because why? They have no choice not to change. You're different. I'm not going to be treated the same. I'm not going to, you know, be talked to this way. But you have to start that change. You have to look at yourself and say, I'm going to be accountable for who I am. I'm going to be accountable for who my actions. And I'm going to recognize what I'm doing first. And when you do so, okay, people will change around you. I have realized in my life that I have been around some miserable folk in certain areas of my life. So miserable, man. They just blame you, you for everything and every problem, you know, and every good thing is theirs, every bad thing you have done. Every time you, you get a smile on your face, every time you feel a little bit of joy, they will come around and take what you have just because they don't want you to be there. Those type of people, they're miserable internally. They are so miserable, but they don't understand it. They don't see it. They, they, they just see you know themselves always maybe in, in this tough position. But what they do is they cause, you know, bad attitudes or they, they cause you know, this reaction when they're around where you find yourself always just around a turmoil where you don't have peace around them. When people steal your peace, you got to be so careful of staying in that area. 
Now, and I know it's difficult, especially if you if you're in, in marriages or you have relationships with these people that you don't need to be sustained. It's something because you realize, how do I get away? How, how do I change? How, how do I get myself in a position where it's different? And this is where prayer comes in because that's where God has to help you. What I have found in my life where I have caused confusion, I have caused, you know, turmoil, and even with my spouse, you know, where I, where I didn't bring peace, where, where I brought only turmoil and I brought only hardship into our lives. And I was miserable, but I, but I was giving off that miserability and I was pushing it into my family, pushing it into my kids. And I didn't realize, you know, they are actually changing. And they're not changing for the better, they're changing for the worse. Remember, there's two types of transformation, right? You got a good portion of transformation where transformation is good. You you know, a person that is excelling and doing the right thing, but you got the type of transformation where you mutate. Okay, mutation is also a transformation, but it's the negative side. It's when something is wrong, it's when something has gone wrong, when you're not the person you're supposed to be. Matter of fact, you're somebody totally different now. I, I think in our lives, if we don't be careful, even as children, and this, as good parents, we have to guide our children. We have to raise them, right, in such a way where we see if they're taking on or becoming somebody different than they're supposed to be, we need to interrupt their lives. And I say interrupt them because we need to get on the inside of them, work with them, so they start to transform into the right direction. Because so many of our kids experience, unfortunately, so much trauma, that so much hardship in certain areas of their life, it starts to mutate them. All of a sudden, instead of them being good kids, great kids, they turn to kids you do not even know. I got, I got a <laughs> lady I know really well, and she has a few boys. And the little boys from kids, just little loving kids. I mean, all these little, little huggable kids. I mean, like, little, little just cuddly kids, man. And, and, and great kids, great boys. But I see these boys as they come into their teenage years and, and they're becoming young men. But, and here they are, you know, gangsters. Or young men they are not supposed to be. But where was the miss? You know, what was the things that started to mutate them? Really, it was their environment. The environment that they were dealing with at home, the, the things that they were taking on the inside of them, and all of a sudden they believe they have to become this type of young man to be something in the world in which they live in. We got to be so careful, so careful what we allow to come on the inside of us, what we, we allow to come into our kids, because if the wrong thing comes in, here they are, they're, they're acting a certain way, but you had to allow the fruit to grow up on the inside of them first. That seed was planted and it became full grown. It's something because things become full grown. It's, it's so difficult to get rid of it in our lives. It's so it, it's so much so difficult that sometimes we don't even know what to do. You know, we can look at our children and say, man, you know, man, it's like almost a lost cause. We never want to give up on our kids, of course, but we may be thinking that because it's like we can't help them to change their lives. Even as a grown man, I changed. I, I gave my life to Christ in my late 20s. I'm giving you this thought process because it was not easy for me to be changed. Now, maybe if, if I had done better as a young kid, maybe, you know, if I had pushed more and, and tried to understand more about the Lord, I could have grew up a little bit different or taken in things differently than what I did. But the things that I did take in, they didn't give me solace. They didn't give me peace. They didn't give me joy. As a matter of fact, it caused so much frustration uh, and turmoil in my life. At one point, man, I had a hard time even wanting to be here. I give you that thought process because so many people are here in their own lives. You know, they, they don't know what to do. You know, they don't have that hope. They don't have that joy. But only God can give that. And if you're connected to the wrong source, you can't get it. Because Satan is never going to give you hope. He's never going to give you love. He's never going to give you joy. He does not have that to give. The problem is a lot of times we don't know we're connected to him. And see, us as Christians, we have to recognize when we see this in ourselves and when we see this in others, first we got to make sure we're working on ourselves as we help others. Because if we can help other people to see what's going on, the hurt and pain that they're dealing with, we have to get them to understand that God can solve this problem. God can come in on the inside of you, you know, through God, the Holy Spirit, and start to change you, to start to grow the fruit of the Holy Spirit within you so you can be different. You know, it, it's something to me, especially when I was young. I used to think, like, how can all these rich people be sitting here jumping off of buildings and, you know, killing themselves? And no, This is just a thought process, guys, about when I was a younger man. Because I didn't get it. You know, they, they have everything in the world. You know, everything they want to do, they, they, they got it. But I was only thinking from the perspective of money. Okay, money does not have love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, you know, patience. It doesn't have that to give. It's just money. Okay, money don't have no conscience, good, bad, or indifferent. It's just money. But I didn't recognize that as a young man. So I went around thinking money was going to solve all my issues. 
and it did not. Because it don't matter how high I had, how much money rather I had when I was a young man, how high I grew with it within the corporation in which I was working for, I did not have that peace. I did not have that joy. And it was only when I experienced that peace and joy through, through my wife and through my children and I was trying to get what they were had, that's what helped me to change. Because they were getting that through church, through God, okay, learning the word and taking it on the inside of them. And that's actually what started me going to church. Because I wanted that thing that they wish they had that I had missing on the inside of me. I seemed like I had all the external things I wanted to have. I was buying different things. It's like every month I'm getting some big thing, big thing. Why? Because I was trying to fulfill something on the inside of me with things that would never fulfill it. That's why I just continue to get more and more of it. And I want us to understand that because this is one of the signs we need to look for. Guys, sometimes we're trying to fill the need within us and we're trying to fulfill it with the wrong thing. You know, that's where the sex, drugs, the alcohol come in, right? We're sitting there trying to fulfill this thing missing on the inside of us, but we're trying to fulfill it with the wrong thing. So much so, rather, that these things can absolutely take us out of here. Every one of those things I just named, sex, drugs, alcohol, has the ability to kill us. Especially if we get a hold of the wrong thing or the wrong person. It has the ability to take us out. We know that's the work of Satan. But because we don't see it that way, we continually just to, to take those things in to try to soothe us. To try to give us peace. I can't tell you how many times I have heard young kids out. Weed, especially in California, is like a, the hugest thing in the world. You know, it just helps me deal with my stress. It helps me, you know, to be, to be at peace. It helps to take my mind off the issues that are, that's going on. And I say to myself, you're trying to give yourself peace with something that does not have peace to offer. We doesn't have peace to offer. Drugs don't have peace to offer. Those other things, alcohol and sex, they don't give you peace. Okay, if you're using them in, in the wrong relationship, you're using them in, in the wrong way, these things can actually turn you on to the absolute wrong thing, get you going in a direction in which you should not go. Okay, these things are band-aids. Band-aids. Why? Because they take your mind off of it because you're high for that moment. These things are not helping you. These things are not getting to the root of what your issues are. Because when you get to the root of what your issues are, that's what God wants to deal with on the inside of you. These are things that are how God helps you. God gets to the root of the problem and gets it on the outside of you. I've, I've told this story sometimes, but I think it's important that I bring it up here in this sermon. Because I, I remember this, this tree I had. This tree had bad roots. I didn't know it at first. And it wasn't that it started off with bad roots. What, what was happening was that we were overwatering this tree. I didn't even know you could overwater a tree, to be honest with you. But we were doing it. And so once the gardener got to the, the root of the problem, got to the issue of the problem, was he found out when he was digging up the tree, when he was going out and see what was going on, that this overwatering, this tree was rotten. And it was rotten from the root system up. And it was something because it had a few leaves on it. We knew how we, as a matter of fact, how we knew something was wrong with the tree is because a lot of the leaves, even though they were on the tree, but they, it, it just wasn't, you know, the tree was looking kind of odd. Still, some of the leaves were leaving, but it still had leaves there. So still trying to live, but because the roots were messed up because they were rotten from all the water that we were giving it, okay, the tree never had, really had a chance to survive. But when the, the gardener went in, he says, you know, we're going to plant another tree. And the next tree we plant it, he says, we, we're going to water it way differently. So make sure the water doesn't get too much into this root system, but just give it just enough. Give it the right environment to which to survive in. Give it the right environment to which to live in. The next tree we had was wonderful, beautiful. Same type of tree. Continued to produce over and over and over. But it's the same way with us, family. When we see something's going on in our lives, what our environment are we allowing ourselves to be in? What environment are we allowing ourselves to live in? You know, what are we continually doing that's putting us in a place, in a position where we're growing or producing the wrong fruit? We have to recognize it. Okay, the things in which we're doing bad, get to the root of the problem. Sometimes you got to uproot some things on the inside of you to root, truly be healed. You can't just address symptoms. Too many times we address symptoms because we are a symptom-based world. We are a symptom-based nation. You know, you got a headache and you can keep having continual headaches over and over and over again. Let me just keep throwing aspirin at it over and over and over again. Okay, it's probably something that you got going on in the inside of you that you need to, you know, root out. You know, what do I really need to address? Do I need to exercise different? Do I need to eat different? Because I can't keep having these headaches over and over. They're not, not just a one-time thing. No, if it's something systemic, okay, you got an actual issue. 
Okay, you don't want to continue just to treat the symptoms. No, you want to address the root so these things don't keep happening on the inside of you. I want to give you this thought process because these are things we have to solve. But we got to get to the root of the issue. And if you're connected to the wrong thing, the wrong source, okay, you won't see the fullness of this. Here in John, John 15. John 15, let's pick up in verse 3. It says, Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. So listen, listen right now to what Jesus is saying to us. He's saying, apart from me, you cannot bear what's good. Basically, you may do some things which you consider good, but he's saying the true things, the eternal things, the things that go from this life into the next life. I hope you guys are hearing me right now. Because the fruit of the Holy Spirit will also be with us in the next life, okay, if you belong to Christ Jesus. Think about everything the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Think about those nine fruits. Those nine fruits never leave us. He's saying the nine eternal things, guys, that are supposed to live on the inside of you, they will bless you while you're here. They will bless you while you're there. They will never leave. So I want you to get this on the inside of you because the world will try to give you things to have you fake this. The world will try to give you things that address your symptoms, but they are not the true things that address you. The true things that address you, the true things that are, that are supposed to be on the inside of you, they will be with you in this life and they will stay with you until the next life. They will be with you for an eternity. But they are not things the world can give. Abide in me. When you abide in me, I give you uh, the ability to be connected to this fruit. Why does he give us this ability? Because if these are fruits of the Holy Spirit, we do not get this ability to we give our lives to Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because that's when the Holy Spirit has the ability to come on the inside of us. Amen? We need to get that right now. So when you're sharing the message, are you sharing this gospel to anybody? Okay, if they don't have this peace, they, you know, they, they, they sit there and experience this hate. They sit there and experience this, this fear and this despair. Give them the understanding when you connect your life to Jesus, you now have the ability to experience true love. Okay, Self-sacrificing love, a love that's committed to your well-being. It ain't got nothing to do with touchy-feely right now. It's about, you know, you experiencing the love that God has for you. That agape love. Amen? You know, the joy that God has for you. You know, the peace that only God can give. A peace that can surpass your, any understanding you, you ever had. It's that type of peace. A peace that you didn't even know could even take place in your life. Some of us have the most worst things happen in our lives. And I never forget this story. It was a, a husband and wife were taking their kids the school one day, and this is a story about something that happened close to where I live. But as they were crossing the bridge, walking, they had parked across the bridge and walking across to where the school was, a little small, small bridge. Unfortunately, a young man was speeding in his car and he lost control. And he hit his wife and his daughter, I believe, or one of his children. But they died right there. They died right there. And the young man was distraught. And the husband came over and he immediately showed forgiveness to the young man. And his wife and his child were laying right there. Dead. Run over. I can't even imagine what the scene looked like. But he forgave him. And I remember the story because it, it was in the paper, but I thought to myself, oh my goodness, where I would want to take that young man's head off. This man is sitting there forgiving them. I says, wow. And when I truly understood that later on, when it took place, I realized that in his heart, he absolutely had the Lord. Because forgiveness, forgiveness is also a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's a fruit that only comes from God himself. You know, when you can forgive some of the most tragic situations in your life, when you can forgive with some of the, the, the most, I mean, the, the most dire things have done, that have been done to you by people that were supposed to love you. Okay, that's something that only God can give you. See, when you're connected to God, he can give you a peace. He can give you an understanding that you, you didn't even know was attainable. So much peace, so much joy, you know, so much love for others 
that you can overcome some of the most harsh things they've done to you. I look at uh, somebody like Joyce Meyer and the thing that she had to go through with her father continuing to molest her and, and rape her, but how she forgave and how she could, you know, continue to, to, to love him and how she, even as an older person, you know, watched over her father, this person that, that had done her so wrong as a child, that has caused so many complications in her life, that had caused so much hardship in her life, but through God through the fruit that was growing up on the inside of her. She learned how to forgive. She learned how to move forward. You know, I have learned also that even in my life, for some of the rough areas in my life, some of the rough things that happened to me, some of us are sitting here and we are suffering simply because we have not learned how to let the past go. But when you give your life to Christ, what tends to happen is he teaches you how to look forward and let go of the things that you cannot change. And I understand that now. I understand through God, we can be so different, but if we want that fruit, if we want what he has to give, we can only do that by staying connected to him. Absolutely, there's absolutely no other way. It's in our connection to God, guys, that we find true life. I am literally, with all the hardship, all the things that we've had to go through, all the things that we've had to learn, you know, all the areas that we may have to be disciplined in, all the areas we have to develop in, all the trials and tribulations that we've had to go through, I have learned to find peace in these situations. It's, it's something because I have realized as a young man, I probably, I'm not sure I would be alive right now. I probably would have so much anxiety. Probably could have easily gave myself a heart attack with some of the things that I've been through. If you don't know me, I, I've told this story a long time ago. I used to have anxiety, crazy anxiety. So much so that I used to have to go to the doctor about my anxiety. I mean, when I say the doctor, like, you know, they're giving me pills to handle the anxiety that I have on the inside of me, right? And then I'm sitting here, I'm giving my life to Christ. It wasn't like it just, this just went away overnight. But when I started to learn God's word, when I started to get it on the inside of me, it's, it's something. Because see, I no longer have anxiety issues. I no longer have to take any kind of pills regarding anxiety. But it's something I had to live through. But I also had to address the actual root of the problem. And when I got to the root of the problem, which was for me, it was fear. Because I had stayed in fear over so many things, fear over my health, fear over my family. Guys, I was worried all the time, and I thought it was a good thing that I had this worry on the inside of me. I didn't realize this worry, this fear was killing me, right? And so when I got to the root of the issue in which God helped me to get to, guys, it literally obliterated it. It obliterated it. Well, I don't have this fear. Okay, I don't have any issue with anxiety anymore. My blood pressure, ooh, I got a regular blood pressure. And, I, and, I, and that's like a great thing because I had this problem since I was a young man. Okay, I had this problem when I was even playing ball. And it was all fear and worry. I mean, I was in great, literally great health from an exercise position. I was in great shape, but I still had a blood pressure issue. Guys, I was killing myself from within. I literally was killing myself from within. I just did not recognize it. So many of us, we can't get the peace we want because we're looking for the world to give us something it does not have to offer. You see, that's the beauty of our Lord. Says, I have this for you, but will you come get it for me? Will you ascertain it? Even us as Christians, we may have given our lives, but we're not holding on to that peace. If we're not holding on to the peace that God has for us, what that simply means to us is we're not holding on to his word. We're not trusting in the Lord enough yet to allow that to manifest itself. What I'm saying is we're not trusting in his worry enough yet to allow that fruit, okay, that, that, that fruit of joy, that fruit of true love, because what true love casts out all fear, we're not allowing that to grow up on the inside of us. Now, we still may go through trials and tribulations because scripture says we will, but we will also have peace in some of our most difficult times. And I want us to understand that. Amen? Amen. Family. When you connect yourself to the right source, when you connect yourself to Jesus, I don't care what trial, tribulation, hardship, whatever the scenario is that you're going through, God has the ability to help us to overcome it. We have to be so careful if we're holding on to the wrong things and we don't have you know, any joy within our, within our hearts, within our lives. We have to realize that it's time to make a change. And it's a change for the better because we don't want to stay connected to the wrong things or the wrong people. We don't want to stay connected to the wrong source. Jesus is the right source. You know, I find sometimes, especially as we love, as we, we love people, we love ourselves, you know, sometimes we get love twisted. 
I keep going back to the statement about love because I want us to understand that true love simply is somebody that's committed to your well-being. If you have somebody okay, that is truly committed to your well-being, they will do everything in their world not to tear you apart. Not to sit here and, and come against you with everything they do. Not to sit here and try to destroy your peace, destroy your joy. I mean, I've had issues where people, a person will come in there and, and just, you know, you could be in it, having the greatest moment in the world, but they're going to come in and tear it apart. But they don't even recognize it. Unfortunately, what's happening on the inside of them, that's that miserable pain showing up on the inside of them. That's, that's where they're at. That's where they're living at. And see, I have learned now to not be mad at that person. Okay, not be mad at those people when they show up. I've learned to pray for them because I realize they're living in misery, just straight misery, and they don't know it yet. They don't understand it yet. And I pray. The reason I pray for them because I wanted God. I truly want God to show them what they're dealing with. You can't change that person. Only God can. Only God can come in and soften their heart to where they take in His Word, take Him in, in which they can now start to experience joy. And sometimes, even our own lives, that may happen to us. If we find ourselves we're in this hard place where we're, we're miserable, we don't have any peace, we don't have any joy, we, man, we, we got to continue to pray. we got to continue to ask God to come on the inside of us and clean us up because we shouldn't be exuding this. This should not be coming on the outside of us. As a matter of fact, we should not have this on the inside of us at all. That means, simply means we're producing the wrong thing. For to change our lives, okay, to be fruitful in our lives, produce the things that God wants us to produce, we got to be connected to the right source. And that's our Lord himself. Amen? Amen. Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Father, that you continue to teach us, continue to help us. Continue, mighty God, to help us to produce the right things in our lives. Thank you, Father, for our families, for our spouses. Thank you, mighty God, that you help us to grow up in you. Thank you, mighty God, for helping us to be mature, to gather your wisdom, to get your understanding on the inside of us. Thank you, mighty God, that you help us in every area of our life to be prosperous. Thank you, mighty God, that you defend us, that you watch over us, that you keep us away from the attack of the enemy. Also, thank you, mighty God, that you help us to go and grow through adversity. Help us to, mighty God, overcome the giants and the mountains in our lives. Thank you, mighty God, that you help us to be stronger in each and every way. Thank you, mighty Father, for all good things. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, amen. Well, family, that's all I have for you this week. You guys have a blessed day. Take care now. Bye. If you are the sound of my voice this morning, you want to know Jesus Christ for the very first time. Romans 10, 9 simply states that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. So if that's you this morning, you want to meet Jesus for the very first time, simply declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And if that's you this morning, you now belong to the kingdom of God. That's the first step. But there's a powerful second step that you must take. Okay, it's the second step is your transformation to become a disciple of Christ. Okay, for you to transform, you have to pick up the Word of God and start reading it, start taking it in. To get with a good Bible-based church so the people, the people there can help you to become the person that you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you can't find nobody in the area in which you're in, you can always find us at harvestvillage.org. Okay, you can email us at admin at harvestvillage.org. And that should be on the bottom of your screen, admin at harvestvillage.org. Amen? Amen. For any reason you may have stepped away from the Lord, Okay, and you're looking to come back. First John 1, 9 simply says the Lord is faithful to forgive all those who ask for forgiveness. So repent. Turn away from what you're doing and turn back towards God. Ask for forgiveness. The Lord is ready to put you back in your rightful position. Amen. Also get with a good Bible-based church as they continue to help you to find the Lord. Okay, and walk in His truthfulness. Well, family, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you for joining me this morning. Okay, thank you for listening to the Word. Thank you for studying the Word. And have a blessed day, family.